Today's quiz revolves around refrigeration. We have a back lab where we have a big refrigerator. It keeps all of our perishable items fresh. This is a very small room and all the doors remain closed. However, one day, our lab technician accidentally left the refrigerator door open and the refrigerator just kept running and running and running. Our question for today is, what happens to the temperature of the room? I'll hold it up now. Here's what our question looks like. As always, mark your answer as completely as possible and list your confidence. Typical responses that we get from students are really one of two. The first one is, it's going to cool down the room. And this one makes sense. Anyone who's opened up a refrigerator door, you can feel the cold air rushing down to your feet. So that makes sense. The room should get cooler. Another group of students would possibly say, wait, we know that there's a coil in the back of this refrigerator and I put my hand up there or been behind there and it gets really warm. So it's going to match the amount of cool and the amount of heat and it's going to be a wash. The temperature of the room would stay the same. Those are the two uh, typical responses that we get from students. To help us evaluate what's going on in this particular problem, we should learn how refrigerators work. Although, technically, you don't really need to know how a refrigerator works to answer this. But let's go through it. This is a refrigerating unit right here. And it all starts with a compressor. That's this big, large, black mass here. There's a compressor and it has a motor that runs it. It could be either a diaphragm type or a piston type, regardless. What compressors do is compress air. Now, we're not just gonna use any air, we use a working fluid. And boy, there's a, a bunch of different working fluids that you could use. You could use ether, ammonia, CFCs, whatever you'd like. Regardless of whatever we have inside this tube, what's gonna happen is that compressor is gonna compress the gas. When we compress gases, they get really, really hot. And when we take that compressed gas, we're gonna try to cool it down. So we're gonna take it to this radiator back here. You'll see that compressor has a tube and that tube is simply gonna go back and forth, back and forth. It's gonna get really hot and these are cooling fins. We're gonna cool that gas. We're gonna cool it so much that by the time it's at the bottom here, it's nearly a liquid. So once we have that high pressure, now cooled liquid vapor, mainly a liquid, right at the edge, what we're going to allow it to do is to expand. So here we've condensed it down. On the other side, we can have our tube coming back here. So the compressor sent it to our cooling unit. Now it's going to come back. We've got a liquid. Now this tube right here, think of this as having a little throttle valve. Now, we don't have to get technical. Quite honestly, all you need to do is crimp the tube so maybe there's a little hole or a little opening. As that low, or I should say, lower temperature but high pressure liquid gas finds a greater volume on the other side. That's all we really need to do is let that gas expand. Well, these molecules want their energy back. This is the evaporator side. And as they evaporate, they need energy. Now, that is what's gonna happen on this set of coils because they are trying to get the energy back so that they can evaporate and become a gas again it's gonna end up taking all the energy from the surrounding. So if I touch this, it's gonna feel really cool. And so this is the cool side of this. Now, once we have that, um, that heat again, we're gonna end up taking this tube and we can follow it along and it'll go back to the compressor. Recompress it, high pressure, uh, high temperature, cool it again, let it come over here, opens up, cools down this coil and repeats. So you can think of this as just being a giant heat pump and that's really all it's doing. That's how uh, refrigerators tend to work. Now, I could take this part of the coil and put it inside like a styrofoam box. And this styrofoam box would make a great refrigerator. I put this coil on the inside and I can have the heating unit on the other side. It'll take all the heat from in here and pump it out to the other side. That is how refrigerators work. Now that students have a working knowledge of the refrigerator, we can get back to the problem at hand. That is what happens to the temperature of the room. 
most of our students are going to say, oh, we were correct. As much heat as we're pulling from the one end of this compressing unit, it's going to push it out the other end. And therefore, the amount of heat that's absorbed will exactly equal the amount of heat that goes out the other side. And that sounds great. In fact, that's kind of what the first law of thermodynamics says. Uh, you can't create nor destroy energy. It can only be transferred from one system to the other or within a system. But then there's the second law of therm thermodynamics. See, look, in order to get this motor to work, something has to do work. I could have like a hand crank on this and I can use a lot of my own energy to get this motor to start pumping energy or heat from one side to the other. But my body is gonna get very warm. It's gonna warm up the whole room. Anyone who's ever been to a gym, you realize how hot it gets when people are working out. We're not gonna do that. Instead, we're gonna use the motor. And this motor is gonna require us to plug into an outlet. And when I do that, I have a power meter. It's measured in watts. When I plug this in, I can see that it needs a lot of power. 300 and, we'll just say 330 to get this thing started. That's how much energy just to get the heat pump to work. And very quickly, you can start to feel that that gets cool on one end and we'll have heat kicked out the other end. But that's energy that we didn't have in the room before that we now do. And that's the bummer of the second law of thermodynamics. We're always gonna lose. Another way to think of this is, if I were to plug in an old space heater, and this one's really old and I can set it at just one coil, it can also use 335 watts. Now, every bit of that goes into heat, but so does all of the energy that a motor is gonna be using with all its inefficiencies, all the working parts, friction and so on. We're gonna generate a tremendous amount of heat. And that should tell us what's really gonna happen in the room. The overall room heats up because we are adding energy. You don't even have to know how the refrigerator works. All you need to know is the room now is getting 335 watts of energy pumped into it. And that's eventually gonna end up warming up the room. All right, that's your quiz for today.